All right, Jack. We are live. We're live. <laughs> Howdy, folks. How y'all are? <laughs> yes. Hey, guys. JS here. I'm here with Jack. You guys have seen him, I think, in one video before. We train a lot. What's interesting about him, he's got a lot of classic firearms, and I think that's very cool. Jack, what do you have here today? This is a military surplus Chinese um, SKS rifle. And this came from Classic Firearms. We got in a large lot of Chinese SKS rifles. They actually came in two batches and I grabbed this the second batch. It had about two pounds of Cosmoline in it. Okay. So I had to completely disassemble it. And it's, um, uh, I did refinish it with True Oil and it filled in a lot of the, I put 10 co coats of true oil on it and it filled in a lot of the gouges a little bit, but it still has the patina that it has. It comes out of the box covered in cosmoline and all the wood is real shiny. And then after you clean it all off, if you clean it off thorough, thoroughly, it goes dull, but it got a little bit of that gloss back. <clears throat> um, if you look at the markings on the side here, that, that tells you Factory 26 in China. It's not a Narimco. It's not a commercial market gun. It's a Milserp gun. The um, serial number starting with 10, and by the way, most of the numbers are matching. The receiver number matches the bolt number, matches the stock number, which is a little... Oh, they actually engraved that into the wood? It's stamped, it looks like. Oh, wow. Uh, matches the trigger group. The uh, magazine number does not match. I'm pretty sure that's the only number on the gun that, that doesn't match. Mm. <clears throat> but uh, the number starting with 10 indicates it's made in uh, 1965. And uh, 10 million series started in 1965. And this is probably early in the year because later in, in 65, they moved the uh, sling swivels or at least this sling swivel to the bottom of the gun. To the bottom? Yeah. Yeah, I yeah. like that. And I also heard, I heard a guy on YouTube say that uh, these are normally stamped or uh, forged. This one's forged. Yeah, I think and, that's nicer, don't you? Yeah, I do. In, in uh, 66, I believe, is when I went to uh, stamped trigger guards. Okay. The bayonet is spring loaded, so you just well, you pull this back, or I'm sorry, you push it out, uh -huh. and it unlocks and pulls down. That is so cool. Chinese bayonets on SKS, Chinese SKS rifles, the bayonet is a little bit longer than it is on some of the other com block guns, mm -hmm. and um, most of the others are a blade. Whereas that one's more of a spike. Does it double as a screwdriver when you're here in a <laughs> Well, that would be a long-handled screwdriver, but I guess you could do that. <laughs> that is a good-looking gun right there. Where'd you buy this from? Classic Firearms. Did you get a chance to go there and pick it, or how does no, that work? No, no. Um, Classic Firearms, uh, you know, they, they're located near here in Monroe, but they don't have a retail store. It's all online. And uh, this is a CNR gun, and I have a CNR license. So What's that mean? Curio and Relic. If you have a Curio and Relic, yeah, that's the safety right there. Mm. And uh, you notice in uh, com block countries, you're not allowed to be left-handed. The, <laughs> yeah. You have the, the indent on the right side of the gun. Unless you have some wood putty. Not. <laughs> <laughs> or you want to take a chisel. <laughs> I guess if you're really good, you could cut out a piece there and then, yeah. and then splice it in back over there. Great. Oh, you got them on stripper clips? Yeah, that's, um, <clears throat> yeah, the ammo, and I actually have a case, I bought a case of uh, Yugoslavian uh, military surplus ammo on stripper clips. It's like 1,240 rounds on stripper clips. Nice. And I use that for um, AK rifles as well as... That's it. Now that's not what this ammo is. This is non-corrosive non ammo that um, I put on one of the, the stripper clips. Mm, gotcha. Okay, but I'm not going to load it in here, but 
you can see how it works. You put the stripper clip right there and then push the rounds down in the magazine. Awesome. Holds 10 rounds. Uh, what do we got on the barrel? What kind of markings? That's the import mark. Okay. Uh, Let's see if I can get it to... Very, very small in, import mark, which is good. Um, most importers have started putting it smaller and, and in a less obtrusive place mm. on, on the older guns. Nice. Or just pristine. Yeah, that bolt is pristine. And the, the um, gas piston. I mean, it looks brand new right now. I mean, it's definitely cleaned up nice. Yeah, I'm telling you, there's a lot of guys in there, for sure. What was the price on it? Well, I think it was $3.99. $3.99? I think they still have some. <laughs> yeah, they said these things came in in the 80s, and they were like... Fifty-nine, eighty-nine, a hundred dollars when they were just coming that's, in by the, that's the true. millions. Um, these they can only bring in the country because they've been in a neutral country for twenty years. Oh, really? Yeah. Do you know the neutral country at all? No, but I uh, ran into Clint from Classic uh -huh. here one yeah. night, and he told me they, they think Albania because some of the guns had um, a butt plate with two holes, two toolkit holes in it, uh -huh. and that's an Albanian feature. Oh. So they, they think Albania. Yeah. I'm going to have to get one of so these. if you want one, it's what? Classicfirearms.com? Yep. Three seventy nine. Cool. Yeah. Now, they're, they're getting toward the end of the lot. Some people that have ordered them more recently have gotten guns with crack stocks. Oh, really? Yeah. So you're kind of getting what you get. All the yeah, premiums are. What you get, you know, all the premiums are. To be honest, out. the exterior really doesn't matter. And, I mean, they're all going to have some kind of patina. Some of them have um, like trench art on them. Oh, that would be cool. Like, like they had one in a video that had somebody's name scratched in the sun. Wow. But it was, it's not art that's consistent with China, you know, or Asia. It's written in. Uh, English alphabet and stuff. So huh. that's, that's... All right. Right on. We're going to shoot it? Yep. All right. Uh, what are you going to do here, Jack? I have not shot the gun yet. The first thing I'm going to do is is um, make sure the iron, iron sights are good. Yeah. Then I'm going to take off this gas tube and put this on. It's a, um, I believe this is an NC Star part. There's two different companies, I recall, that make a gas tube with a rail on the top. So Are you, you going to be the first guy ever to put a red dot on an SKS? Well, there's two companies that make these, probably uh -huh. not the first person. To use. <laughs> You're going to be one of the few, though. Oh, jeez. Yeah, I mean, that's that's a relatively inexpensive Holosun red dot. 503. We're going to train with this? You're going to take this into a rifle class? <laughs> well, how exactly would I do a magazine change? I, I don't know. You know. Don't load it up and hit this button, that's for sure, because it all falls out. So, yeah. <laughs> Right on. Let's take it to the range. Okay. How heavy do you think that gun is? It's about that heavy. <laughs> if you had to guess. Heavy. Like an AK is like what, 10 pounds? Uh, most of them aren't that much. This is heavier than an AK. Yeah. No question about that. Let me see. Actually, maybe like 12. Yeah. It's solid wood. We're on the small bay, so this is only a, what, 15 yeah, yards? Probably. So, you know, if it blows up, it kills me. Takes us both out. Uh, yeah. Deploy the bayonet. I understand they zeroed these things with the bayonet deployed. Oh, really? Well, that's the way to do it. In case you're thinking you're getting overrun.
Nice. Okay. See what it looks like. Huh. What do you think? Well, um, I was that's actually where I was aiming for. So allowing for mechanical offset, I thought I would hit down here. So I was a little surprised. Let me fire five more, I'll aim for that. Let's see okay. That. I have a hard time on a short table like this. Yeah. Oh yeah, that's a year. Hey. I guess I call that good. <laughs> <laughs> she wanted to just practice bayonet. <laughs> <laughs> well, hey, come on. <laughs> what were you at, 30 feet? Yeah. Okay. Let me give it a whirl. I'll shoot at the bottom of the one. Thousand meters up there. Okay. Cool. Dang, I'm nervous. Sights look good. I'm just gonna go for the tip. Great. Yeah, it does. Smooth. The reset's awesome. Like this. I mean, it's a well. Cool. Oh, yeah. No adjustments necessary. Yeah, I really nailed it. <laughs> Sweet! Put the red dot on. Red dot. Think we're going to westernize it? Uh, a little bit. Jack, it is a sweet shooting. Rifle. It is. That's kind of I, I'm thoroughly impressed. All right. And uh, I mean, it's been fired a few times now, but see how what in good shape that that piston is. Mm-hmm. I mean, that was pristine. Go ahead and yankify it up with our. Uh, Oh, who makes that? There are two companies that make this. One of them is in uh, the, the gas tube with the rail on it. One of them is NC Star. Actually, you're and not yankifying it up because NC Star is Chinese. And this is Tapco. Oh, that's Tapco? Yeah, all this right. is a Tapco. All right. Well, I believe go. the NC Star version has a rail on all three sides. But okay. This, this is Tapco. And some fitting is required. I've already fitted the, the gun. You have to file it down that angle just right Okay. to get it fit. To fit right there. How long did that take you? Not long. Uh, not long at all. I was really surprised how mm. easy it was. Of course, I haven't fired it with this yet, so. Yeah. We'll see.
I have a um, Ultimac gas tube on my AK, and, and they tell you um, to center it to, to make sure it's not tight against either. Yeah. All right. Oh, good Lord. <laughs> oh, Jack. You're so funny. What an anachronism. Oh. An SK with a red dot. Oh, my God. I don't know how I feel about it. There's just something repulsive about it. Does it feel... <laughs> How do you feel? I'm conflicted. I'm conflicted. I. Oh, we're gonna get so much hate. <laughs> they we're gonna. They are gonna yeah. say go back to period specific. I wanted to bring this to the carving workshop one night. Oh my god! The, you know, an instructor would just look at you and go, "What? <laughs> What's that?" Well, it would be like um, Chris Serino when I had a Galil. Yeah. It, you know, I got there after he looked at everybody else's gun. Then we're walking out on the range. Yeah. He walks past me and looks down at the Galil and goes, What the hell is that? Yeah. Yeah, we're all in the class. And then Jack breaks out his Galil. AK like hybrid gun. And hey, but we did pretty good. Remember, I was your partner. We were doing jams on it. We got that it thing to jam. jam. No, it, it was good. The other guns would jam a lot easier yeah, than yours. It was hard to make the Galil jam. Yeah, I had to really take a mag and stuff it right in the... It, you, it was you, hard. Yeah. It was pretty easy to make yours jam. Oh, yes. <laughs> easy. Easy. Yeah. Uh, there's going to be some offset on that. Look, look how... <laughs> I just feel... I mean, it's the same concept. You know, we're not worried about co-witness, you know? It's like... <laughs> You know, lower one third. Oh, Jack. That's all I can say. But hey, guys, he wants to have a good dot. He loves his guns. Why not? You can do whatever you want. That's the beauty of it. But me, I probably would keep it. But see, Jack, you have a lot of SKSs. So if this is just another one, why not put a dot on it? I only have two right now. Yeah. I, I sold a one that I had. But yeah. The, the other one is Russian. Oh, Russian one's cool too. Well, the Russians made it first. As a matter of fact, um, China started making these in 1955. Uh -huh. And the first ones they made were like Russian parts. Uh -huh. they, they, when they started making them in China, they imported all the parts from Russia. And then they gradually transitioned over. Yeah, it's a Russian gun. It's the gun that, that spanned the, the time gap between the Mosin the Gun and the AK 47. Right on. And, it, and it's the AK round, the 7.62 by 39. All right. Deploy the bayonet. There's just something cool about loading this gun with the stripper clip. Yeah. Get it before you. Uh, can I get a shot? Come right in front of you. Oh, uh, red dot. Actually, you know what's kind of interesting? That's made in China, the Hollow Sun. So maybe that is <laughs> country of origin specific. <laughs> <laughs> That was a good group. Your third and fourth uh, shots, you, you went right through the same hole practically. Yeah, and uh, I was trying to put the dot right there. Okay. And that, that's about right for the mechanical offset. Mechanical offset, that's what Serena called it. It's yeah. basically from the barrel, height of a bore from barrel to sight. That, actually, that might be a little bit low, but. Actually, it looks about right to me. Really? Um, if you pull your bayonet in, we can line it up the way Chris Reno showed us. I thought that was a great teaching moment. He said, walk up to your target, basically, and then, you know, there you go. We're looking right through it. Look through it. Where's the dot? On the money. Really? Yes. 
on the money. Okay. <laughs> awesome. Well, I'd call that good, Jack. I wouldn't well. even try to mess with the dot. Now, you're supposed to have like a 25-yard zero or a 50-yard zero. Yeah. You know what and, I mean? And we were kind of... If we're in a longer day, I would bay, I would run it up. Yeah. So... Out and we'll go out a little further with it. Okay. Oh, you got that. I love that. Oh, you got all 10 on that time. Woo! All right. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Go ahead and deploy it. Deploying! And shoot five rounds right out and then bring it out and see if it makes a difference. Lower right hand corner. Okay. I forgot the hold over. We'll stop it there. And then we'll, you want to try it without the in it? Yeah, yeah, let's just see if it makes a difference. Okay. Shoot it the left side. Take a comparison. Oh. I'd say they're the same. You know? Yeah. Yeah. I, I've actually never heard whether it matters on these or not. Some people say a Mosin the Gaunt, it makes a big difference. Mm. No, these are pretty much. But, yeah. Thumbnail groups. Yep. Sweet. What a great shooting gun. And and the, and the red dot's not bad. <laughs> I gotta admit, it's it's not bad. Look, there it is in action. That uh. I, yeah, I see what you mean, Jack. I see what you mean. Final thoughts, Jack. Well, I'm happy with it. It's a good shooter. And, yeah. Uh, uh, like I said, I zeroed this at, at home with the laser bore sighter, and I didn't move it, and it held zero after it was removed from the gun and reinstalled. Yeah. So yeah. I'm happy with everything about this today. I think the next test is take it out to 25, 50 yards and further. 300. 300. Who doesn't need a red dot with their bayonet? <laughs> That's so funny. God, we're going to get so much hate. <laughs> Red dot and bayonet deployed, baby. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, why wouldn't you if you could? Uh, hey. <laughs> oh, God. Oh, I'm going to lose subscribers. <laughs> All in good fun. Hey, guys. Got to have fun with this stuff. Yeah, it's totally reversible. Yes. I put the ugly one back on here in a second. <laughs>